let's wrap up the lecture on public good. So in this, in this lecture and in these couple of videos, we have expanded the economist's toolkit by the analysis of a very important phenomenon that is public goods. Public goods are very common. We have talked about many examples in, in the videos and we'll talk about more in the actual lectures. Um, but public goods are very interesting and, and a challenge for, for policymakers because they represent, from an economist's perspective, a market failure. Now, I put this up here in inverted commas because it's not, um, it, market failure here sounds negative, but it doesn't have to be negative. There are many public goods about which we all agree that they are important and necessary and, and a good thing to have. But what the, what the market failure really refers to is that the logic of, of markets where market participants internalize um, all their decisions and their decisions affect the prices on the market and, and they react with their decision to whatever happens on those markets um, doesn't quite work with, uh, with public goods. It doesn't actually in many cases work at all. Now we have learned what characterizes a public good, uh, non-rivalry, non-excludability, um, and we've also said that there are very few goods that, that exactly fulfill these, these definitions, but there are lots of impure public goods that, that share some of those characteristics, and to which then um, the economic theory that we learned also applies. Now the biggest challenge with public goods provision is the incentives to free ride. So because the public good depends on contributions and effort of, of, of people and firms, um, but because we cannot exclude anyone from the consumption of it, there is always an incentive to free ride. And that if every agent, a person, a firm, acts in their own best interest, then they actually would, that, that would actually lead to under provision because their best action is to contribute either very little or nothing to the public good, but to consume it because everyone else would contribute. At least that's their assumption. But if everyone thinks that way, then the public good doesn't get provided in the first place. And that obviously isn't an efficient outcome. And so the question is then, uh, first of all, under what conditions are those incentives to free ride bigger and smaller? And that's a very, very active field of research in economics, but not only, also in, in, uh, in many other social sciences, in political science, in sociology, in, in psychology, um, and, and also in philosophy. Um, and because there are obviously groups and societies that are more conducive to solving that, that free data problem and, and others that are simply not, where you can, can see that, that you know, people act more in their own interest and, and are not willing to, to contribute to the public good. So typically when there is social control, when there is, when people know each other well, when there is a sense of community, whatever that exactly means, um, it, people are more likely to contribute to a public good. Um, now, if people don't contribute to the public good uh, to the efficient extent, the question is what one can do. And one solution is government interventions. And this is what we see very often. You know, there, there is a reason why the government it runs the army or runs the police force or in many countries runs the, the postal service, uh, the, 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 the railways and so on, um, because uh, it would very, be very difficult to organize that privately and also to get everyone to contribute. And the government can simply uh, use its power to levy taxes 
and then actually um and and actually provide the public good. The problem is that the government doesn't quite know what uh, people's willingness to pay for a public good is. And so uh, if, if a government steps in, that crowds out private contributions. Now, to what extent that is a problem depends on, on the context. Um, I, I personally don't think crowding out is, is such a big policy issue. Um, but this this is my personal personal opinion. I, I believe the the bigger issue is that the government cannot always uh, provide public goods as efficiently um, as, uh, as firms in the private sector can. Um, so so the challenge here is really to how can we leverage this expertise from private sector firms and the, uh, but at the same time avoid things such as lobbying, rent seeking, corruption, and and all those things. So the challenge for policymakers is is really to to make the decision whether we want to just intervene and 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 provide a public good through the government or whether we want to through contracting out or or other forms of of contracts um or of other forms of or other arrangements um have a mix of private and public provision of public good but i hope i could convince you with this lecture that um, if we leave things to the free market, that that may not always lead to the best outcome. And uh, economists are often accused of being free market advocates, but we have seen here, and we will see also in the lecture on externalities, that free markets very often can lead to inefficient outcomes. And for that reason, let alone moral concerns uh, or distributional concerns one might have about, uh, about the outcomes that free markets produce, but even from an efficiency perspective, free markets oftentimes require intervention of government. And that's why we do this course. And, and I'm hoping I can make you a bit more aware of, of, of that and uh, of, of this fact and also the fact that, that this is actually what economists uh, are really care about. Because if, if the free market solved every problem, plain and simple, we wouldn't need to be here. We, we could simply do something else um, because the solution is then clear. But in this lecture and in some of the other lectures you will see that the solution is far from clear and and that's why we need to get a deeper understanding of of the limits of free markets and 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 actually of the rationale behind government intervention and public goods are one of the main rationales for public for government intervention